Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. I'm Bill Drees with The Daily Memphian, and this is On the Record, a special edition of the podcast we record this Wednesday, May 4th, 2022, the day after the first of three elections this year in Shelby County, the county primaries. Let's start with some numbers before we get into the races, the results, and what's next. A turnout of about 11 percent in an election cycle that is the lowest turnout of any election cycle in Shelby County politics year in and year out. In the 30-year history of partisan county primaries here, turnout for this cycle has never been higher than 18 percent, and that was in 2002. So 11 percent, or just under 63,000, voting early absentee and Election Day in both sets of primaries. About 15,000 in the Republican primary, which came to one contested race, and it was a district race for the Shelby County Commission at that, and no GOP primary for Shelby County Sheriff. The primaries for sheriff, even before the general election in August, are normally contentious contests that bring a certain amount of energy to the overall ballot. Republicans decided not to even put the race on the ballot this time. About 48,000 voters in the Democratic primaries, all told. By the way, these numbers are unofficial. This is based on the 62,764 people who voted in the dueling primaries for district attorney, the highest turnout primary on the ballot, 166 more than in the mayoral primaries. Most of the votes were cast during early voting, more than half of the Democratic total and more than half of the Republican total. Four years ago, the early vote was about 57 percent of the total turnout. Democrats managed to pass their early voting turnout in the 2018 county primaries this time, but what we saw on Election Day was another Election Day drop in turnout. All of which reminds me that at the outset of early voting coming to Shelby County politics some 30 years ago, about the time the partisan primaries arrived, election officials of that day said that early voting would probably not increase overall turnout, but instead rearrange the way the vote comes in and make it more convenient. This time around, the Shelby County Election Commission again taken to court over the decision to have one early voting site downtown open for the first two days of the period, then five more on the Saturday before Easter, and all 26 after Easter. The court denied a move to force more sites to be open from day one. The Election Commission nevertheless worked with the Shelby County Voter Alliance and the Memphis Area Transit Authority on free bus rides the last day of early voting, as well as a voter hotline to help the 85 percent of voters who either had a new county commission district, a new precinct, and or a new Election Day polling place or some combination of the three. You might see this partnership grow. You will most certainly see a continued push and insistence to open all early voting sites from day one in what is a larger discussion about whether the role of the Election Commission is to set up to encourage a larger turnout or to set up for what is the usual voting volume. Now to who won, and you have to start with County Mayor Lee Harris's mammoth win over primary challenger Ken Moody, who wanted a one-on-one with Harris and got it. This race was over the minute the early voting results went up. By the unofficial all-in combined totals, Harris finished with 70%. Of the vote. Harris is an unconventional candidate whose goal over the last four years has been trying to fundamentally shift the priorities of county government with mixed results despite having eight Democrats on the county commission and Democrats holding every partisan countywide elected office except one. 
district attorney. In his re-election bid, Harris did not run on his record as much as he ran on what he wants to do with a second term. Moody campaigned on cutting that short and adopting what would be a county government version of Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland's brilliant at the basics model. Moody is an assistant to Strickland. Strickland did not endorse in the primary. Harris, who as mayor works with an elected sheriff and a host of other countywide elected officials outside the umbrella of the administration, basically said those officials handle things like law enforcement on a day-to-day basis in county government and similar responsibilities that the city mayor controls through appointed positions. Well, that to Harris means he can focus on issues that speak more to national politics than they do the day-to-day basics of local government. And it means a longer development of programs and policies that can court impatience. The issues for Harris are expanding access to health care, a living wage with county government as an example for the private sector, and more second chance programs for those coming out of prisons. Toward the end of this four-year term, he has started to see some traction with mental health counselors in police precincts and a juvenile assessment center moving at last after several false starts. Moody said it was too little, too late, and time to the re-election effort. And there is abundant anecdotal evidence that this was a tough decision for many voters who were on the fence about whether Harris was making progress on progressive goals that they agreed with while leaving more immediate tasks to other elected officials. In looking at the totals, you have to say those voters ultimately decided in favor of Harris. The pursuit of these kinds of goals to the exclusion of other issues he is willing to let others take on is what makes Harris the top of the Democratic ticket in a way that made him the tip of the spear in the 2018 blue wave in county elections, and this year, the leader of the party's drive to sustain that wave and add to it. Harris shared a campaign headquarters with Steve Mulroy, the Democratic nominee for district attorney, and you will probably see him campaign with Mulroy, as well as push the entire Democratic slate of nominees. Harris faces Memphis City Council member Worth Morgan on the August ballot, and Morgan will pick up where Moody left off in pushing a brilliant at the basics approach to county government. That will be mixed with an appeal to conservatives and the Republican majority in the suburbs outside Memphis and probably a harder hit on the crime issue than Moody used since that has been what Morgan has been known for in his two terms on the council. Mulroy's victory in the three-way primary to determine who challenges Republican incumbent Amy Wyrick in the August general after thinking the 2014 race for DA might be the setting for a substantial debate and referendum on criminal justice reform in a city with a significant violent crime problem and instead getting the debacle that was Joe Brown's challenge of Wyrick, the stage is set this summer for that major discussion. Wyrick and Mulroy have already traded enough barbs to suggest this will be a crackling race with moments when unexpected events outside the political bubble will probably add twists and turns that neither side will expect. Meanwhile, political newcomer Janika White made a strong showing her first time out, strong enough that she will probably show up again on the ballot. And former federal prosecutor Linda Harris's expertise on restorative justice practices, while not the stuff that moves voters, might mean she shows up in the DA's office in another role should Mulroy upset Wyrick. Further down the ballot, the new county commission taking shape, and it will include more women, more African-American women. Former Commissioner Henry Brooks returning to the body with her Democratic primary win in District 7, Brittany Thornton in District 10, Miska Clay Bibbs in District 11, which, by the way, creates a vacancy in her Memphis Shelby County Schools Board seat that is next on the ballot in 2024, and Erica Sugarman in District 12. In District 4, Brandon Morrison surviving a Republican primary challenge from Jordan Carpenter in a primary that put Morrison in a new district on both sides of the fault line between city Republicans and suburban Republicans. Morrison scrapped on both sides of the line in a campaign that emphasized local issues while Carpenter pursued some national issues and stances that ultimately did not carry the day. 
He questioned Morrison's conservatism, and she challenged his ability to get things done on a body that is majority Democratic and could go to a nine-vote Democratic majority, depending on how the new Cordova District 5 goes. At the start of the filing season, much talk among the Democrats about how many countywide incumbents who were part of the 2018 blue wave were primaried four years later. And three of those incumbents will not be advancing to the August county general election ballot. Circuit Court Clerk Tamika Gibson, upset by City Council member Jamita Swearingen. Probate Court Clerk Bill Morrison, finishing third in a primary race won by outgoing County Commissioner Eddie Jones. And Register of Deeds Shalandra Ford, finishing third in a primary race won by outgoing County Commissioner Willie Brooks. Janine Gordon, the daughter of outgoing juvenile court clerk Janice Fullylove, is the Democratic nominee going into August there. And incumbent county clerk Wanda Halbert with a strong showing in the Democratic primary against three challengers. With that, on to the campaign into the August county general election ballot, the same ballot that features dozens of nonpartisan county elections for judge, as well as school board and state and federal primaries, including a statewide primary for Tennessee governor. That's why they call it the big ballot. All of that covered in the Daily Memphian. I'm Bill Drees, and this has been On the Record. In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.